In the year 1666, an exceptionally charismatic rabbi and Kabbalist by the name of Sabbatai Zevi declared himself to be the Messiah. Born to an affluent family in Western Anatolia, he was a particularly eccentric mystic who had attained a massive following of over one million devotees during his lifetime, roughly half the world's Jewish population in the 17th century. His extraordinary popularity, according to historians such as Professor Gershom Sholem, resulted largely from the publication and availability of what is today called the Lurianic Kabbalah. Named after Rabbi Isaac Luria, this new Kabbalah enjoyed broad dissemination in the 1500s thanks to the invention of the printing press in the previous century. Jews from around the world for the first time had access to occult literature about the deeper meaning of their faith and the popularity of Jewish mysticism soared. A key aspect of the Lurian Kabbalah is that it required active participation to set the stage for the arrival of the Messiah, to bring about the conditions that would initiate or directly expedite the fulfillment of Jewish messianic prophecy. In other words, instead of simply waiting for God to act, the Lurianic perspective expected Jews to play an active role in bringing forth God's kingdom on earth. This new European Kabbalah, as opposed to the older Chaldean version, is unanimously attributed to Luria and was extremely popular at the time and is still the most broadly disseminated and used Kabbalistic system taught today. Part of this Kabbalistic method included ways of interpreting the supernatural relationship between events and time, often through letters and numbers. The magical emphasis given to the numerological value of dates contributed greatly to the widely held expectations and hope placed on the coming of a Messiah at the time of Sabbatai Zevi's advent of the 18th day, which is 6 plus 6 plus 6, of the 6th month of the year 1666. Sabbatai Zevi's messianic claims were rejected by the leading rabbis of Jerusalem as well as the Sultan of the Ottoman Empire who offered to behead him if he didn't convert to Islam, which he immediately did. Sabbatai's formal conversion to Islam really dismayed many of his followers to say the least, but those who continued to be loyal to the Sabbatean movement took it as a sign to also convert to Islam while secretly maintaining their Jewish identity and mystical occult practices, which included religious orgies involving incest, sex magic, and sacrifice. His followers are known today in Turkey as the Donme, which translates to religious converts, a derogatory term which they themselves never used. And so the Lorian Kabbalah became a mystical synthesis between pagan teachings which preceded the Torah and Gnostic elements of Judaism. Many texts pertaining to the Kabbalah, including the Zohar, say that the task is not to destroy evil, but to return it to its source. To put it simply, to include the left within the right, in the Zor Zoroastic metaphor, or to uplift the fallen sparks in the Lurianic one. The rapid spread of the teachings of Rabbi Isaac Luria and his Lurianic Kabbalah resulted in a grafting of the then current theories of the Kabbalist onto the traditional Jewish view of the role and personality of the Messiah. This new philosophic paradigm, in the estimation of many scholars, provided a spiritual justification for proactive Zionism and therefore the events that directly brought about the modern formation of Israel. My name is Robert Sepper. I'm an author and anthropologist, and I'd like to invite you to explore history, politics, and religion from a new perspective, an occult or hidden point of view. 1666, Redemption Through Sin.
now also proudly available in Germany.